Today I'm asking one simple question. Are Vault City's Iron Brew beers really worth the hype? Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today I'm going to be checking out Vault City's Iron Brew beers to find out whether they are really as good as everyone seems to suggest. Now for those of you who are thinking I may have missed the hype train on this one, to be honest I had no intention of reviewing or looking at these beers but I was in my local bottle shop last week, it was Burns Night and well a lot of people as a result were drinking these beers and I thought you know what I've got to grab them to take them home and find out for myself. There are actually three versions this year, a uh, regular version, a iron brew float version, kind of like, you know, like a cola float soda ice cream job, and also a fiery ginger one, which is the one I most wanted to get my hands on, and of course is the one that had sold out by the time I'd left and purchased my beers. So, bit of a shame, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We will at least test out the original one today, and well, depending on how good that is, I might crack into the vanilla vanilla float, iron brew float one as well, but we'll see if we get time. So then before we break into it, what is it? Well, as the name suggests, it is a iron brew flavored beer. Being from Vault City, I'm pretty sure it is a sour, although they don't actually say it on the front of the can look, it's just Vault City Iron Brew. It's coming in at 4.8% and it doesn't actually say anywhere on the can what it's meant to be. So presumably it's just an alcoholic iron brew for all intents and purposes. Um, a quick look at the can actually, I mean, it's a, it's a nice looking thing, the artwork, well, very suggestive of Scottish rugby, which is probably well timed given the Six Nations has just started. But, you know, we'll actually, there's another bit about that artwork which we need to get into a bit later, but we'll do that after we test the beer. Standard Vault City stuff, really. I mean, it's quite a, I don't want to say it's a plain can because it's not, it's got a lot of stuff on it, but there's not a lot of information on this can for what is effectively quite a hype beer and now a yearly release from Vault City. So, bit of a surprise there. But anyway, let's see what the beer tastes like, shall we? As soon as I open the can, loads of kind of like creamy vanilla and orange zest. I'll be honest, I just checked that I hadn't opened the float version by mistake, but no, I haven't. But yeah, it's definitely it's got some interesting notes, kind of like sweet shop oranges. I mean, it looks like iron brew. Now it's in the glass, and I'll be honest, I got a bit ambitious at the end of the pour there, so it's very foamy, but. I sit here now and I'm thinking, why have I suddenly, suddenly thought about Pancake Day? It's like a month away. Ha! Wrong! Shut up! Actually, I've just checked and by the time this video comes out, it's probably nearly Pancake Day. So it's not a month away, it's actually only two weeks away from where I am sat right now. But anyway, the reason I'm thinking about Pancake Day is because it smells like freshly cooked pancakes. You know, you put a bit of sugar and a bit of orange juice on there. That is that is the vibe it's giving off. It's really odd. But anyway, in the glass, despite the terrible pour, it does just look like Iron Brew. If you've never had it, I mean, that's what it looks like minus the foam. Just kind of a semi-translucent, very orange liquid. Little bit luminous, little bit neon. Kind of like you're not sure whether you should trust it or not. But I tell you, it is pretty tasty. So let's get into the aromas on this one. Much less fresh orange and kind of baked goods as kind of well just as it smelt in the room before i got my nose into it it's very sweet shop refresher bar iron brew bars like don't get me wrong it does smell like the drink but it smells more like the sweet version of an iron brew it's tangy sweet fruity there's a bit of acidity to it i'm not going to try and guess what's actually in iron brew but it's that kind of overly sweet and candied oranges a bit of lemon a bit of i guess a fruit salady vibe it's it's there i'll give it to them it does smell exactly pretty much like an iron brew like the abv is not coming through on the nose but then again it's not really that strong i know in previous years it has been stronger and they've also done an iron brew extra which was like an eight percent version which i'll be honest i feel like would have been more of an event than whatever this 4.8 percent one is but i do know that this 4.8 version when it sold directly from vault city was actually quite a bit cheaper than some of the special editions though i think they're sold out so if you go and get these from a bottle shop like i did you can expect to pay anywhere from four to kind of seven pounds a can for these which is potentially a bit wild but 
well, it smells wild, and yeah, I'm just quite excited to get into it now. Let's give it a go. Cheers. Kind of lip-smacking sour bitterness. It's not properly sour. It doesn't feel like a kettle sour. It's distinctly sour, sweet sour. It's really fruity. It's really iron brewy, which is a terrible review, really. But hear me out. I am going to go through it and give it a proper top to bottom taste test to try and work out what's going on, split the bits apart and all the usual spiel. But as an initial impression, and this is probably going to be no surprise, it's going to be almost the same review that I give to any Vault City beer, maybe with the exception of that DDF gingerbread thing that I reviewed a few weeks back around Christmas. But, you know, it's big, lavish, lush, mouth feels good. Tastes are fantastic. It tastes exactly like what they said it's going to taste like. Where's the beer? Again, and I know, and a load of you are going to go, oh, it's an old fart talking about that he wants some more beer taste in his sour beer. I do, actually. Like, I'll be honest, I do, because what's the point in calling it beer? Because I know people go, well, they've been putting fruit in beer for centuries. Yes, they have. Things like Fruly, go and look at the German fruited beers. You know what? They taste like fruit and beer. Now, don't get me wrong, this is immaculate it is fantastic it tastes exactly like iron brew but the only thing that really sets this apart in my mind from just being iron brew with some vodka in it because that's effectively what we're talking about here just alcoholic iron brew is the mouthfeel it is more pillowy more lush more decadent than you're going to get out of yeah, just sticking some booze in your iron brew. And it is impressive and it's good, but that is it. And just as I say that, I might have made a mistake. There is a sliver, the tiniest remnants of some sweet kind of shortbread biscuity malt right at the end. It's that much. It's the tiniest bit, but I've got to be honest about it and give them their dues. It is in there. Is it enough to make me go, actually, you know what, this is a flavoured beer. Not quite enough, but, well, it's better than some of the other ones they've done, for sure. Um, interesting. Right, let me give another sip. It is good, though. Like, oh, I'm torn. I'm so torn. Top this up. Top to bottom taste test time. So, initially, right on the tip of the tongue. Fizzy sweets, refresher bars, slightly acidic, slightly bitter, punchy, stops you mouth had to swallow them because it really just gets your mouth watering like something not quite right you know in the way that fizzy sweets do it's all of that all up from hints of orange but you know generally mixed fruit sweet vibes then over the first third right away it's proper full-on no nonsense iron brew the acidity remains but it dials back a bit the sweet shop note remains but again dials back a little bit you get a bit more of a proper kind of orangey caramelized orange peel note and along with it, this kind of, this Iron Brew, I've always found to have this kind of metallic -y edge. I don't know what it is, what causes it, and well, they've nailed that as well. Metallic notes in beer isn't a new thing by any means, but to have it mix in the right way, to taste that way, the way that it does, yeah, actually, it's pretty damn impressive. Then, over the mid palette, fruit profile develops. It stays majority in that kind of slightly acidic, overly sweet, candied orange thing. But you start to get a few other notes come in. Some kind of black currants, raspberries, darker fruit notes. But they never really fully take over. It's very consistent, this beer. Like that flavour over the first third is pretty much what you're going to get throughout. Then onto the back of the palate. The real fruit starts to wash away. Big jump back in acidity. Poppy, sour super sweet shop vibes once again like it's refresher bars iron brew bars all day long it's quite a good palate cleanser actually like it properly clears out anything on your tongue have this kind of between courses at a fancy dinner and well people might give you funny looks but it'll definitely work aftertaste very drying on the tongue very synthetic almost chemically like sherbet notes if that makes sense it's like it's riding that line between kind of orange or lemon sherbet and I'll be honest, detergent, like it's really like riding that line quite thin, but it's just on the right side of it. It doesn't become too astringent, too, yeah, I say dish soapy. Um, but then, as I say, right, right at the end, and it takes a few sips to get it, there's just this underlying sweet, 
almost vanilla y shortbread biscuity malt kind of yeah just end to it that I say just just by the skin of a rice pudding keeps it in uh, keeps it in beer territory I say it's absolutely fantastic it's glorious it tastes exactly like iron brew it tastes exactly like it's meant to but if you're after an iron brew inspired beer this isn't it this is the most bougie and exciting version of an iron brew I've ever had but it feels much more like an iron brew than it does like any sort of beer so yeah depends what you're after so then let's take a look at this can as i said before on the front it just says vault city iron brew at 4.8 percent uh the actual artwork has got a well a, a bloke with uh ginger hair who looks a little bit like um oh there was a there was a computer game from like the late 80s early 90s um it was like a a bad and ultimately very inappropriate ripoff of like Robocop. Um, I can't remember what it was called now. Um, you know, Scotland Rugby shirt, you've seen it already, but for what it's worth, there it is again. Um, he seems to be ironing his uh, tartan uh, something, uh, presumably blanket or kilt, we can't tell. In the background is the very fancy bridge going over Edinburgh. Um, I think I know what it's called, but I'm not going to embarrass myself in case I've got it wrong. Yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, it does tell us that it's a product of Scotland. It tells us that the ingredients are water, malted barley, oats, hops and yeast, which, look, you can, you can pull some wizardry out of the bag using different hops, different yeasts, different malts. But if that's really all that's in there, they deserve all the applause, but I am questioning it, if I'm honest. Just gives their address, it's vegan friendly, 2.1 UK units, 440ml can, 4.8%, and then it says, uh, there are many things Scotland has given the world, but perhaps the most iconic is iron brew. The bold color and unique flavor evoke a sense of national pride that's otherwise only found when talking about our tap water. It is good though, like Scottish tap water is a-okay. It's timeless, like a pint at the airport also true. So here's our take on the nation's favourite soft drink packed with pride and irony goodness in every sip. I've just realised I was saying about that metallic taste of course that's why it's called iron brew. Hmm. Stupid moment. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Anyway that is it but I did say I want to talk about the artwork on these cans. Now if you're thinking they look kind of familiar but it's a bit weird and I don't know maybe it's the same artist and I've seen something by them before that could be the case but I've had a look on both cans and nowhere does it give credit to an artist for the work that's been done. The reason that they kind of look familiar but a bit weird is well most people on the internet at least and I'm not saying this is exactly true because I don't know for certain but well it looks an awful lot like a uh, AI image generated kind of thing. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go away and see if I can recreate this using AI. See if they'll give me the same interpretation. And I will put the result on screen now and you can tell me in the comments how well I did and whether we really think it is AI or not. But there was a bit of a furore about that because in effect look, it's free to get rather than paying an artist to do your can work. Now I understand that times are hard in the brewing industry and let's be honest if the difference between going bust or not is whether you get chat gpt to make your artwork or not well you know maybe we can excuse that but ultimately vault city when you're putting out i'd, I'd pay 10 quid a can for a 330 more can for christmas so when you're putting out beer at that price and i get it, it takes a lot to make and you've got your tax and whatever but yeah i don't know not sure not sure i'm buying it uh, anyway it does look nice, it looks interesting. I'm not gonna drink the float today because I feel like I've been waffling on for a while, but I'm gonna save it and you let me know in the comments if you want a review on that as well. And if enough of you say yes, then I'll do it. And if not, maybe it'll happen on a live stream or something like that. But is it worth it? If you really like Iron Brew and want like the most extravagant interpretation of a Iron Brew that happens to be a bit boozy, 100%. If you want a beer with a bit of Iron Brew flair, as always with Vault City really, it's not the thing, it's not what they're doing, but is it worth it? Yes, it is actually, I would buy it again. I don't say that about a lot of Vault City beers, but these, yeah, that is that is tickling an itch. Not a beer itch, but yeah, an itch for something else. And that really is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you would be so kind, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.